Hello, wonderful people, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my neuroanatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the first cranial nerve or olfactory nerve, and the second cranial nerve or the optic nerve. The third is the oculomotor to move the eyes. Fourth and sixth are also to move the eyes. The fourth is trochlear, the sixth is abducens. How about the fifth? That's trigeminal, to feel my face. Then we have cranial nerve 7, to move the muscles of my face. The eighth cranial nerve is for hearing. Glossopharyngeal have some sensory functions, motor functions, and parasympathetic functions. The vagus is the wanderer nerve. It is vague, it goes all over the body. Supplying structures in your head, neck, thorax, and abdomen. As for today, we shall talk about the accessory nerve, also known as spinal accessory nerve, because it's part cranial and part spinal. This is the 11th cranial nerve, which is a purely motor nerve. It is going to help you shrug your shoulder and look to the other side. Shrug your shoulder, look to the other side. Now smash that like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This video is part of my anatomy series, and if you just want neuroanatomy, I have a separate playlist for that as well. Today is the accessory nerve. It is a purely motor nerve. It is not sensory and there is no parasympathetic in it. So it is a general somatic efferent or simply somatic efferent. What does the word efferent mean? Efferent means that I will start in the brain and I'll go somewhere else. Efferent is motor and motor is efferent. However, sensory is afferent. Here is my brain, you draw your line in the sand, anterior is motor, posterior is sensory for the most part. And we have talked about this concept before, ad nauseum. See what I did there? Only students who understand neuroanatomy will get the joke. And the same concept applies to the spinal cord, anterior is motor, posterior is sensory. Today we're talking about the accessory nerve, which is a nerve that starts in the medulla and then leaves to go outwards. If it's outside the brain, it is a nerve and therefore it's part of the peripheral nervous system and not the central nervous system. Cranial nerve 11 is the accessory nerve. Is it motor, sensory or both? The answer is only motor. What is the structural unit of the nervous system? It is the neuron. The neuron has a soma. It also has an axon. Recall that a collection of somas in the central nervous system is called a nucleus. A collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system is called a ganglion. A collection of axons in the CNS is a tract and a collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system is a nerve. Today, you'll learn about the nucleus of the accessory nerve, which is nothing more than a collection of somas in the CNS, namely in the medulla. You will also learn about the accessory nerve. And what's the definition of a nerve? It is a collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system. So if this is the medulla oblongata like this, the nucleus of the accessory nerve is here. What's a nucleus? It's a collection of somas in the central nervous system. Amazing. And then what? And then the axon will leave like this. It's not just one axon. It is gazillion axons. A collection of axons outside the CNS is called what? It is called a nerve. Accessory nucleus, accessory nerve. Inside the medulla, outside the medulla. Cranial nerves, where do they start? Well, cranial nerve 1 and 2 come from the forebrain. 3 and 4 come out of the midbrain. 5, 6, 7, 8 come out of the pons. 9, 10, 11, 12 are from the medulla. Since today we're talking about the accessory nerve, it comes out of the medulla, but that's true only for the cranial part of the accessory nerve. It also has another part which is spinal, coming from the spinal cord, and that will be called the spinal accessory nerve. And then the cranial part and the spinal part will join together to give us the accessory nerve. You can download these doozy colorful notes on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. Is the accessory nerve somatic or autonomic? Answer, it is only somatic. Is it somatic motor or somatic sensory? It is somatic motor only. If you really want to understand the accessory nerve, grab a pen and paper and doodle with medicosis. What do we have here? Let's draw the medulla. Amazing. Okie dokie, these are the pyramids. And if these are the pyramids, it means that this is anterior. 
next to the pyramids, of course, we have the famous olive. So where should we start uh, from the nucleus? Okay, what kind of nucleus? It is the nucleus ambigus. Ambigus? We've talked about this before. Ambigus with an M is located in the medulla with an M. Ambigus with an M is motor with an M. Motor to what? To muscles. What kind of muscles? This is what we'll talk about today. So, from the ambiguous nucleus or the nucleus ambiguous, the lovely accessory nerve emerges like this from the posterior lateral sulcus of the medulla. And then what? I want you to forget your medulla for a second and focus on the spinal cord, which is below the medulla. From the spinal cord, usually upper five or six cervical segments. Here's one, two, three, four, five. Let's make it six. Okay, all of these will converge like this to give us the spinal part of the accessory nerve. And then what? All of these, i.e. the spinal branch of the accessory nerve or the spinal root of the accessory nerve will actually enter into the foramen magnum of the skull. What else passes through the foramen magnum? Please post your answer below in the comments. Here is the spinal root of the accessory nerve going up until it meets with the cranial root of the accessory nerve and then they join together to give us the accessory nerve. The accessory nerve will then move into the jugular foramen. Who else is in the jugular foramen? Please comment below. Then guess what's gonna happen after we pass through the jugular foramen and leave the cranial cavity? Oh, the two roots will separate again. Again? Yes, that's true. They will separate again. So I have a cranial part and a spinal part. The cranial part will join with the inferior ganglion of the vagus nerve, which is the 10th cranial nerve, to supply whatever the flip the vagus nerve is supplying, which is all the muscles of the pharynx, except stylopharyngeus, and all the muscles of the palate, except tensor valley palatini, as well as all the muscles of the larynx, with no exceptions. And that's it for the cranial part or the cranial root of the accessory nerve. But how about the spinal root? The spinal root will supply two famous muscles, the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle. Sternocleidomastoid muscle will help me look to the opposite side, which means that the right spinal accessory nerve will supply the right sternocleidomastoid muscle, which will help me turn my face towards the left side. Next, the spinal accessory nerve will also supply the trapezius muscle, which helps me shrug my shoulders. It also helps me abduct the shoulder joint above 90 degrees. So let's review. Here is the accessory nerve. I'm starting here. Nucleus ambigus, which is in the medulla, which is motor to muscles. Muscles of what? Well, I'm going to follow the vagus anyway. So just like the vagus. All the muscles of the pharynx, except stylopharyngeus, because it is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. All the muscles of the palate, except tensor valley palatini, or simply tensor palati, which is supplied by the mandibular nerve. And all the muscles of the larynx, with no exception. I'm done with the cranial part or the cranial root of the accessory nerve. How about the spinal root? It supplies two muscles. Shrug your shoulder, look to the other side. Shrug your shoulder by the trapezius and look to the opposite side by the sternocleidomastoid, which attaches to the sternum, clavicle, and mastoid process. Who else is gonna make anatomy doozy and colorful like this? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. After the accessory nerve emerges victoriously from the posterior lateral sulcus of the medulla, that's the cranial root, it's gonna join with the spinal root. Where the flip did you come from? From the upper five or six cervical spinal segments. So there you have a cranial root and a spinal root joining together to give me the accessory nerve. How did the spinal root enter into the cranial cavity? Answer, via the foramen magnum. Okay. And then they join together spinal root with cranial root to give me the accessory nerve. How did the accessory nerve leave the cranial cavity? Answer, through the jugular foramen. To be specific, through the middle compartment of the jugular foramen for the anatomy nuts out there. And then what? The two roots will separate again. You know what that reminds me of? Of the brachial plexus. We start separate, then we join, and then we separate again. 
except that for the brachial plexus we will reunite yet again. Watch my video on the anatomy of the upper limbs to learn more. Okay, so I separated to cranial root and spinal root. Cranial root is gonna follow the vagus nerve via the inferior ganglion of the vagus and then it will go supply the same muscles that the vagus supplies. All the muscles of the larynx, all the muscles of the pharynx except one, all the muscles of the palate except one. As for the spinal root, it will descend into the carotid sheath between the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery. Who else was smothered between the two vessels like this? Oh, vagus nerve. Yes. How about glossopharyngeal? Also yes. Did the vagus nerve enter into the carotid sheath? The answer is yes. Did the glossopharyngeal nerve enter into the carotid sheath? The answer is yes. But the glossopharyngeal will leave the carotid sheath early on. If you want to learn more about it, watch my video on the glossopharyngeal nerve. You'll find it in my neuroanatomy playlist. The spinal root will descend like this. It will go deep to the sternocleidomastoid. It will enter into this triangle of the neck. What's the name of this triangle of the neck? Please comment below. And then as you see, it will supply the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscle. Shrug your shoulder, look to the opposite side. Shrug your shoulder, look to the opposite side. So today you learned about the accessory nerve, which is purely motor. It is general somatic efferent. Its cranial component or the cranial root joined with the vagus nerve to supply the muscles of the larynx, most of the muscles of the pharynx, and most of the muscles of the palate. As for its spinal root, it supplied two big muscles, sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. If you want to learn more about neurosurgery, ophthalmological surgery, pediatric surgery, orthopedic surgery, trauma surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. To learn about angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, cardiac arrhythmias, ARDS, and much more, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. And if you want pharmacology, I have the complete series on my website including my antibiotics course, my neuropharmacology course, cardiac pharmacology course, endocrine pharmacology course, and everything. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. There are more than 300 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.